the job done and whether he is the change that they want to see in their communities. We don't want to see them become a ghost town. And it's getting pretty scary right now if this infection continues. They're seriously going to have to take a look at how they're, they're you know, what's the alternative? So, so, we're, so locally we shouldn't be voting for Kathleen, Tim, and Andrea. We should be voting for the local it's person. It's going to be person. about James. You know, this yeah, is, this is what I believe, change. truly, honestly, this is part of, of my heart, if you will, the, the blood flow, is that all politics is local. It's about the local issues. It's about how do we progress? What kind of growth can happen? It's all about the voters at that particular point in time. It's about the people, and that's what politics is. I keep saying that a lot. I should use that as a campaign well, slogan. Yeah. <laughs> but as a person running an award, an award in in uh, summary, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because uh, that's truly what it is. You know, one thing that. Um, that I find, and I'm, I'm probably going to get thrown under a bus by this, but this is what I believe. All the hoopla and all the hype that's coming down between Tim, Andrea, and Kathleen, all of it is hype. Honestly and truly, it's hype. And I don't buy it. That really, I, I, the only time I yell at the TV is when the Canadians <laughs> play the Leafs, or, or when I see something so bizarrely crazy like this morning on the news about how Andrea said this and Kathleen said that, I'm like, oh, give me a break. That turns me right off. That hype is just not what it's about. So they can have Sunday dinner together and get along perfectly well. Exactly. You know, that's not, and that just bothers me. I just yell at that. The fact that we are in a minority government situation, or were, because government is dissolved now, is an issue. So when you hear, and I mean, voters aren't stupid. Voters get it, right? So when we say we're in a minority government situation, that means there's more of them than there are of us, right? So when they say, well, you didn't get this done. Well, why didn't we get it done? Because it was filibustered. Because you stopped the motion to go forward. Because you were, you were doing this or you're doing that. And that's what a minority government is. Mm -hmm. Guys, folks, we have lived through that with the Harper government. How many times in the minority government situation were we at the polls? Right? Yeah. We lived through this already. We've gone there before. I do understand that the voters are sending a clear message, right? When there's a minority situation, the voters are saying, okay, we believe in you, but we're putting you on a leash. Mm -hmm. I get that. And I respect that. But at the end of the day, you have to make government work. And this is the culture shift That's that we're talking shift. about. We have to make government work. The opposing parties should not be looking for the power struggle. They shouldn't be looking for the golden egg. They should be saying, mm -hmm. let's work together. So they should exchange so shirts. Yeah. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. You know, I, I have to don a uh, Toronto Maple Leaf jersey every now and then when I lose a bet. <laughs> Even though I'm a Canadian fan and everyone knows that who's on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and it involves risks to make these changes. Absolutely. And well, people will have to absorb a certain level of, of maybe, you know, a displacement of beliefs, thoughts, and ideas, and values around things for a bit so that they can maybe take a look at a different... The great part about it is that, you know, if, if this party doesn't work for you in this area at that point, then you've got a time when you're going to be able to vote someone different in. And and that's that's just the way it works. At the same time... What is working? Let's t is that being discussed at all? What is working in the Nickel Belt riding right now? Well, from what we're seeing, we've got a stagnant culture, less growth happening, in fact, a lot of regression going on, and a lot of people trying to get the heck out of these areas because it's just dying. That's not a necessary thing. These have been thriving communities for a long time, and that can be brought back again. And, and it, you know, it's the veins that feed the heart of our culture. And for, for me to say 10 or 20 veins aren't important and it's only the arteries that matter would be a foolish thing for me to think. And, you know, we, and all of it has to be clear yeah. and, and worked through. So. Absolutely. And I mean, the Ring of Fire is an example of that. You mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, Cote Gold or I Am Gold, that was just what Cote was bought out by I Am Gold, the gold mine in Gogama area. Mm -hmm. This is where you need to start working with these companies. You know, when Cliffs actually put a quote on the budget saying, we are very happy to see this happen and we will be keeping an eye on what's going on. That's progress. That is progress to me. When I see Cote Gold 
uh, or I am gold sending me a Facebook message saying the First Nations agreement regarding the Ring of Fire is so important to us James thank you for getting that done that's important yet these are the big shiny items that belong in Toronto but they do have local flavor because they impact our particular riding I am gold is definitely an issue for Gogama because that will revive that that particular community you know and the fact that there may be 300 votes in Kogama. I don't care. One vote is important to me. If I can get 324 by helping I Am Gold set up shop in Kogama, good for me. But I'm not after that. I'm just after for that one vote. I'm after to make sure that that community survives. The same thing for Capriol. The same thing for Chemisport or Hammer or all the communities that are in Nickel Belt, Coniston, Wanapate. These are all important communities. Esther, Wana, these are all important communities. And wonderful know? people living in it. Absolutely. I mean, let's, you know, we're a little biased because our <laughs> roots are from these communities, but I really do believe that they, they are a people of principle and they do believe they, they, in, in the right thing, doing the right thing. I think that's who they need to represent them right now. Uh, someone who's just interested in doing the right thing and not about glamour and not about self and not about aggrandizing who you are uh, at, the, at yeah. the upper levels, but someone who's willing to get down and dirty and put yeah. the hoodie on and get yeah. dirty at the knees for a while. And, and, do the and work. you know, so. part of my, like, my nomination speech is I am here to serve you. That is the one thing that I truly believe in. Politics, to me, is about serving the people. Like, I am a politician. I should change that and scrap politician put server because really that's what I'm there to do. I'm there to help people, I'm there to serve the people. And that's the important part for me. It's not about the pedestal, it's not about the glamour. It's all about the dirty hoodie and the muddy knee. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good... Uh, it's a good thing I'm not a stylist. Good, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, uh, that's a good place probably to, uh, to stop uh, before we get into whether you can still play the accordion. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, Corrine Jordan, you, you, you've got your work cut out as a oh communications goodness. director and, and in a short period of time. James Tregoning, you, you've got your work cut out getting out into the, uh, the population and uh, talking to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, this whole culture shift may in fact be forced upon us by the younger generation who never listened to their parents anyway <laughs> and, and may, once they start turning out to the uh, voting booths and numbers, then things may change and, and we may become a principle centered uh, mm -hmm. province. Who knows? Um, it's, it's been great. Um, great conversation. Been, uh, Thank you yeah. so much. I, Thanks uh, very much for having me. Both. Yeah, the people who have been listening, I think uh, it's, it's, been, it's been very informative. Um, we will, like I say, extend invitations to all of the candidates, and it is such a short time frame. I mean, you've got almost a year to to run for your your ward mm -hmm. in the municipal election in 35 days for <laughs> the province, but um, uh, it, it, they will see where it goes. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to thank you for listening to The Learning Clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM. Uh, we've gone longer than we thought we were going to go, but uh, I think we've covered more than we thought we were going to cover too. And, uh, and I want to thank James Tregoning, who's running for the Liberal uh, Party in the Nicobel writing. And, uh, Marian Jordan, who is the communications director for his campaign team, and uh, wish you the best of luck. And again, stay tuned to uh, CKLU for the rest of the afternoon. Your shows are amazing. I love, I love listening to your shows. Seriously, I'm like, if I'm not home, I, I have it streamed. And it's recorded on my, uh, on, yeah, I just love your shows. The one you had with Ron Dupree, oh, what a wonderful conversation. The time just flew by. It's been a run now. <laughs>